Hello, today we'll learn some basic terms that we use to learn neuroanatomy. We'll cover this under the following headings. We'll learn first how to hold the brain in the anatomical position. Next, we'll learn the planes that we use to study the brain sections. Next, we'll uh, learn the terms that we use to understand the anatomical directions. And then we'll go to the white matter and gray matter, where you have the white matter and where you have the gray matter of the brain. So first we'll go to the anatomical position of the brain. If you see the brain like this, this is a part of the cerebrum. You can identify this as a cerebrum by looking at this prominences and these fissures. The bumps are called gyri and the fissures are called sulci. And this picture does not have the cerebellum and the brainstem, but I'll add this in this line diagram. This is the cerebellum and this is the brainstem. So if you have brain like this, first we have to get it oriented. It is interesting to assume that the brain is somewhat looking like a boxing glove. Okay, you imagine these are the fingers of the boxing glove and this is the part, the socket for the thumb. In that case, this is somewhat looking like that. If you imagine my brain and I'm holding it like this in front, this is somewhat having a, a profile of a boxing glove. So you can imagine that this is the frontal lobe of the cerebrum. This is the parietal lobe. This is the occipital lobe. And this part, the thumb, will be showing the temporal lobe. So the frontal, parietal, occipital and temporal. There are clear cut demarcations for this that we'll learn later. But on a whole, you have to understand you have frontal, parietal, occipital and temporal lobes of the cerebrum. If you look carefully, you can note that the frontal pole, the frontal lobe, temporal lobe and their poles, the tips of the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe, the frontal and the temporal poles, they will be directed forwards. That is the orientation of the boxing glove like this. And the occipital lobe and the occipital pole will be directed backwards. These three are very important landmarks that you can use to orient the cerebrum. So if you have uh, more than the cerebrum in your anatomy specimen, for example, you have the cerebellum and the brainstem, then it's more easy. The cerebellum will be pointed backwards. The brainstem will be in front. So if I paint the whole thing in the space, you have the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, F, P, O, and T, F, P, O, T. If you look carefully, it is almost making a C, the frontal, parietal, occipital, and temporal. And then you have the cerebellum below the occipital lobe, and you have the brain stem in front, containing the midbrain, pons, and the medulla. This is the orientation of the brain. You have to, when you get a brain specimen, it may be half brain, it may be a brain section. You have to try to get it oriented in this to uh, avoid confusions when you detail about the brain. Now the, uh, the analogy with the boxing glove is very interesting because if you actually separate the thumb and the other fingers of the boxing glove, you can see a hidden part of the cerebrum. You can see if I, if I separate the thumb part that is a temporal lobe from the frontoparietal part, if I separate that you can see another part that is hidden. This part is called the insula. So altogether you have frontal, parietal, occipital, temporal and the insula which is considered as a different lobe by many of the neuroscientists. So the planes that we are going to discuss is pretty much uh, known if you have a basic idea about neuroanatomy. So in this picture you are seeing the brain with three planes that are orthogonal to each other. That means these three planes are perpendicular to each other. If I, if I show these three planes in my brain it will be like this this and this okay so we are going to define each of these the first one is a sagittal plane the meaning of the word sagitta is arrow why it is called arrow you can remember the word sagitta with this zodiac sign that is the sagittarius which is an archer with a, a body of a horse and the head of an archer so if an, an archer will be holding his arrow and his bow like this the plane of the bow will be going like this so that is the sagittal plane it should be noted that sagittal plane is any plane that runs parallel to this plane. Not only this plane, but any planes that runs parallel to. So you have infinite number of sagittal planes. The one that runs through the midline is called the mid sagittal plane, also called the median plane, which is a very important plane that we will use to learn many aspects of the brain. So this is mid sagittal and all the planes that are parallel to them are called sagittal planes. The next plane that we are going to consider is this one which is called horizontal plane. The word horizontal comes from the word horizon which is the horizon of the sea or the land. So this plane is called the horizontal plane. 
It should be noted that horizontal plane has another very important name which is more common in clinical scenario especially in uh, cross-sectional imaging we use that name more than the horizontal section and that is called an axial plane it is also called axial plane the next plane is very interesting it is called the coronal plane now how is a coronal plane oriented coronal plane is oriented like a tiara crown tiara crown is the one the crown that this lady is wearing it is a crown that runs like this okay the word corona means crown so this plane is coronal plane this is the axial or the horizontal plane and this plane is a sagittal plane if you look carefully each of these planes are cutting the brain into into different pieces you look at the sagittal plane the sagittal plane will be cutting the brain into left and right pieces it can be equal if it is a mid sagittal plane but it can be unequal if it is not a mid sagittal plane if a, an axial section will be cutting the brain into an upper and a lower part the coronal planes will be cutting the brain into front and back parts okay. now we'll just review these planes by looking at the sections okay you can see one brain section over here you can see another diagram here which is again showing a section you can see another uh, mr image uh, magnetic resonance image which is again showing a section you need to identify each of these what is a what is b what is c a is definitely a coronal plane you cut the brain like this so this is a coronal plane uh, you can see that plane running like this so that is the coronal plane this is an axial section an axial section so if you see a picture like this it is an axial section we'll learn of what all these structures are all that will be dealt later now this is a sagittal this is a midline sagittal plane why did i say this is midline sagittal you can see the nasal septum here you can see the vermis of the cerebellum here uh, you can see the uh, thalamus you can see the phonics over here all these structures and you can see the medial surface of the cerebrum over here so this is running almost through the midline so this is a midline sagittal plane uh, section so uh, we learn a lot of neuroanatomy using these different different sections so it becomes very important 